The following program is made possible by friends and partners of the Quick Study Television Ministry. Thank you for your support. There is never ever a point in our lives, no matter how wise we think we are, that we are above God's correction. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembry. I'm Janice. And I'm Corey. This is the Quick Study Television program taking you through the Bible in one year. And today, from our headquarters at BibleDiscoveryTV.com, we are focusing the book of Proverbs once again. And as we focus on the book of Proverbs, my question to you is, are you confused and cluttered? Well, let me tell you something. The Word of God straightens us out. And none of us, no matter how brilliant we think we are, no matter how many awards we have won, even if we've got Nobel Peace Prizes and every other kind of prize, no one is above the correction of God's Word. Going to be talking about that coming up as well as Bible archaeology. Corey? We are taking a look at the gates of Solomon. Solomon built up many cities, but there are three specifically mentioned in the scripture, and there are three specifically that archaeologists have unearthed today. I can't imagine the feeling realizing that you're looking at the gate mm -hmm. that Solomon's men built. That's a stunning reality mm -hmm. uh, that they've discovered. Read about that. It's going to be good coming up. Bible Discovery TV Challenge on Another the way. Another stunning reality. Here it is. According to Proverbs, what does the tongue of the wise promote understanding, righteousness, or health. Now this is the tongue of the wise, yes. not the tongue of the unwise. That's right. So what does the tongue, meaning the words of the wise, what does it promote? All right, that coming up, stay there. Moses was given the law of God, the chief central focus was upon the Ten Commandments. Interestingly, the second commandment was not to make idols or carved images in any form. Moses was raised, however, in the house of Pharaoh, in which he would have been taught hieroglyphics. The word hieroglyphics is derived from two Greek terms that mean sacred carvings. The Egyptian language itself, then, was an abomination to God's people according to the second commandment. There are about 750 sacred pictures and images that were used in the ancient Egyptian language. Many Bible scholars believe that the reason God wrote the first Ten Commandments himself by the finger of God according to Exodus was to show Moses how to write the language of Hebrew and put his word in that original language instead of the sacred carved image languages of the Egyptians. continue to study through the book of Proverbs on quick study, uh, I want to take an opportunity to speak more, to give honor to the author of Proverbs, uh, the physical human author of Proverbs, which is of course King Solomon. Now Solomon was David's son and he's really the last king of the united monarchy of Israel because after Solomon during his uh, son Rehoboam's reign, the kingdom actually split into two separate nations. Uh, right now, we're going to take a look at some building styles of Solomon, but this is brand new. You've never seen this study before, so take a look at Solomon's Gates. 1 Kings 9 verse 15 says, This is the account of the forced labor that King Solomon had imposed to build the Lord's temple, his own palace, the supporting terraces, the wall of Jerusalem, and Hatsor, Megiddo, and Gezer. 
King Solomon built up the United Kingdom of Israel in many ways, but here the Bible records three strategic cities that were fortified and renovated, Hatsor, Megiddo, and Gezer. All three of these ancient cities have been extensively excavated, and what has been found has caused a scholarly war. At all three of these cities, identical gates have been found from the same time period. They each have the same dimensions, directional orientation, have six chambers, and connect to a casemate wall, which is a specific type of ancient wall. At Hatsor and Megiddo, large building complexes were also identified, as well as palaces at Megiddo and possible storerooms or stables at each site that would have been renovated by later kings. Though strongly and hotly debated, all of these features, especially the six-chambered gates and casemate walls, have been dated to the 10th century BC, right during Solomon's reign. Due to the fact that these cities are spread between what would become known as two separate kingdoms, northern Israel and southern Judah, it's only reasonable to attribute their construction to David or Solomon. Before David, the kingdom of Israel wasn't safely united, and after Solomon, the kingdom split into two. These gates have stood for thousands of years as representatives of an organized united monarchy that was fortifying the country. The Bible gives us the name of that monarch and specifically identifies these three cities. The king was Solomon. The time was 970 BC. What is right? What is wrong? What is good? What is bad? What is true? What is false? The current global social climate can be expressed as confused and cluttered. Now in the West, this confusion is expressed in our laws and our legal systems, cluttered with pointless words and ideas. For example, in Idaho, the law says it's illegal to go fishing while you're sitting on a camel. In New Jersey, the state, it's actually against the law to murder someone while you're wearing a bulletproof vest. In New York State, there are an estimated at least 127 statutes governing the making of a hamburger in a public restaurant. We are a confused and cluttered people. But the Proverbs of the Bible helps us to become much more clear and uncluttered in the wisdom of God. Proverbs 12, verses 1 through 9. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions he will condemn. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. The words of the wicked are, lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous will stand. A man will be commended according to his wisdom, but he who is of a perverse heart will be despised. Better is the one who is slighted but has a servant than he who honors himself but lacks bread. Proverbs chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. Cluttered and confused. I think that would be a great explanation of how we define today's global world climate. And that's what you expect, really, from a, a media-driven world, where now the Internet reaches over 86% of the world. Um, and there is a lot of clutter and confusion on the Internet. I think everybody 
would agree that the international global sidewalk has a lot of stands on the side, some good and some many not so good, and a lot of dark places as well. Well, today, Proverbs chapter 12 helps us to unclutter our lives with some great wisdom. I want to talk to you about that today. Remember that the Proverbs has four terms that we constantly see presented. Wisdom, knowledge, instruction, and understanding. Now, sometimes understanding is called discretion. And so those are the things that we need to remember God wants us to learn if we call ourselves Bible believers. If we call ourselves people in the church and followers of God, then it goes without saying that we should possess the wisdom of God. But just become we, because we come to Christ and our spirit wakes up with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ and a profession of faith, it doesn't mean that suddenly we're all wise. But God says, I need to, uh, through Peter, to add to your faith virtue and add to your virtue knowledge and godliness and brotherly love and so on. So there are things we need to add to our faith. And that knowledge is part of wisdom. And so today in Proverbs chapter 12, we're going to explore what that means, some of that wisdom. But we're going to do it in a way that the Proverbs explains in kind of a unique way of showing conditions and the results of those conditions. Here is the first one. We look at Proverbs chapter 1. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. <laughs> uh, my mother used to tell me, never say stupid. Then I found that verse in the Bible, and I said, Mom, I can say stupid because it's in the Bible. <laughs> the word stupid means unlearned and unaware. And so here we have a very interesting point, and it's this. There is never any point in our lives in which we are above correction from God or His Word. There is never any point in our life in which we have arrived, in which we have, you know, said we know it all. God should have us on, on His counsel. Uh, he should, you know, we are advisors to God. Uh, that's pride, and that actually is stupid. That's unlearned. But here we see that we must always, throughout our life, be ready for correction. Now, here's how it works. It seems to work. That when we get to places in our lives and God corrects us in those places, what He does is He moves us on to other places that need correction. And our entire Christian believing life is God moving us from place to place where we need the instruction of the Word of God. Isn't that interesting? And by doing so then, we can take what we've learned and help others, but we do so in great humility, knowing that those who we're helping, we realize that we also need help from others. And that's how the body of Christ works through the wisdom of God. But it must only come from the Word of God and not the psychology of man. You know, I'm very concerned because there are many, many um, ideas today in books and radio programs and television programs that are capture, capturing the, the ideas of man, of psychiatry and psychology, and, and calling it God because it's a Christian psychologist and applying it. But really all it is is the wisdom of man. What we need to do is have a revival of the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. I believe that with all my heart. We need a revival of that in our church today, uh, which much in our church has turned into foolishness. So we need to restore the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of God. In short, the church today needs to be instructed and corrected by the Word of God. I say that to myself. And so I challenge you, there are 31 Proverbs, so every month read all the way through Proverbs. And where there's 30 days, read 30, but where there's 31, read the whole thing. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 2 says this, A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but the man of wicked intentions God will condemn. That's interesting. Notice it's the intentions that God condemns. That's fascinating. God looks at the heart when assessing our circumstances, not our works. You see, we can do all the right things for the wrong reasons. This is wisdom. To realize that there may be people who are doing the right things, but they might be doing them for the wrong reasons. You see, it's not the thing itself that is actually the definition of good or bad or sin or righteousness or wickedness, but it's the reason we do it. It is the heart condition of the act that we do. That is very important. And there are many in today's world uh, who call themselves Bible believers and followers of Jesus Christ who have a, a bad heart condition in the soul, in the spirit, and they need the correction of God and the understanding of who He is so they can begin to do the right things for the right reasons. 
not simply for guilt servicing or anything else, but the right things for the right reasons. These are good words from Proverbs 12, verse 3, which says, A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. Now, here is the third and final power connection I want to focus on today. Anything built with the wisdom of this world, beloved, will fall. It will come to an end. But those who assemble their lives with God's wisdom, they will prevail. You see, it may look like the wicked are successful. It may look like those who are wicked and do not have any time for God have all of the money and all of the media and all of the attention and all the power. But it's just not true. In three seconds, somebody's life can be taken away from them. In three seconds, it can be gone. Everybody thought Michael Jackson was a powerhouse. Michael Jackson's gone. And people will pass away. But if the work in our lives is done with the elements of God and the components of the Word of God, it will linger to the next generation teaching and helping, leaving a trail of life, not of death. The book of Proverbs was written during a time of peace for the nation of Israel. There wasn't peace in nations surrounding Israel, but for Israel herself, she had peace. Nevertheless, Solomon in the book of Proverbs utilizes a war imagery uh, when he's conveying ideas of wisdom. So what you and I are going to do right now is we're going to take a look at some of the ancient types of warfare. In order to gain control of a city, an attacking army could surround the city, holding the citizens hostage inside. This is the beginning stages of siege warfare. A siege could progress in many different ways after all the outside supplies and communications of the city had been cut off. An army could try to trick and lure out the fighting men of a city, luring them into an ambush. They could employ sappers, men to dig tunnels underneath the city's walls. They would often dig trenches around the city and could even simply wait for the inhabitants to begin to starve and hopefully surrender. A forceful route could be taken, building siege ramps up to the city walls and gates. This is what the ancient Assyrians and Romans were famous for. The walls could be scaled using ladders, the most dangerous approach, but quick and sometimes effective as seen on the carved walls of ancient Egypt. Early on in history, battering rams with covered frames were invented for sieges. They were heavy, metal-tipped logs used to break open a gate or even a part of the wall. To be put to siege was not a good situation to find yourself in. There were ways to fight back, but the attacking armies often came prepared to wait. Babylon's siege of Tyre lasted 13 years. Quick Study Television and Bible Discovery TV present the Psalms of Praise, Episode 2 with Janice Hembry. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. Join Quick Study's Janice Hembry and musician Jean DeVries on keyboard as key selections from the Book of Psalms are presented in prayer and meditation form in this beautiful one-hour CD designed especially for Quick Study partners and viewers. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. To receive your CD, call or write to P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada and internationally, write to Quick Study, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. 
we suggest a $10 donation above your regular monthly giving to keep Quick Study strong through the summer. You can also get it directly and download it at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. Bible confirms what we have discovered about ancient history and the new science of archaeology. Fire was a sign of God's covenant or divine presence. In many ancient pagan practices, fires were burning in their temples as signs that their gods were always watching over them. However, in Psalm 19, the Bible speaks specifically about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show his handiwork. The psalm goes on to speak of the burning light called the sun. It says, For the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of its chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run its race, it rises from one end of the heaven, and its circuit is to the other, and nothing is hidden from its heat. To the ancient mind, this is a clear sign of a superior God watching over his creation. The physical sun in our solar system is a sign of God's divine presence, watching over and ready to rescue his creation with the work of his son, Jesus Christ. Quick Study TV presents Good Friends Fellowship Sunday services with the teaching of the word, great worship and fellowship in the chat room. You're invited to join Pastor Rod and Janice online at Good Friends Fellowship every Sunday. Services begin at 11 a.m. Eastern at www.biblediscoverytv.com. Remember to follow the links to Good Friends Church Services. Now, as we study the Word of God, we, we understand that the word instruction in the English, in its original Hebrew form, taken from Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1, is pronounced musar, and it means discipline, means chastening or correction. Now, the word knowledge in this particular verse comes from the word pronounced da'ath, and it means discernment or spiritual understanding and perception. So Proverbs 12.1 can now be expanded to read this way. He who loves discipline, chastening, or correction also loves perception, discernment, and understanding. But he who hates corrected, or correction rather, is stupid. So to be smart, according to the Bible, has nothing to do with IQ. It has nothing to do with a gifted intellect. To be smart, according to the Bible, is to have a mind well-disciplined and chaste, and in possession of the passion for discernment. And I want to stress that. There is a passion that we develop for discernment. Uh, there is a, some people call it a hunger mm -hmm. for knowledge. Some people call it a, a hunger for God. Uh, I like that many people today are talking about the hunger for God. But really what that is, is a passion to know and understand the virtue, the moral excellence of who God is. Mm -hmm. And uh, because when we do that, when we are in his presence, most people who are hungry for God, it's not just emotion. What they want is they want a change. Mm -hmm. They That's want so true. the emotion to, to stay with them and change. Yeah. Not so they can always be emotional, right. but mm -hmm. so that they can be changed people. Mm -hmm. So Different a person, true hunger for God yeah. mm -hmm. always results in a change. No change mm -hmm. comes without accepting the correction of God. That's true. Very interesting. Very true. And of course, that's what Proverbs is all about. It yeah. is. Very good. All right, uh, let's get to the, the, the Bible Discovery TV Challenge. According to Proverbs, what does the tongue of the wise promote? Understanding, righteousness, or health? Hmm. I'm going to guess understanding. All right, now. These are very difficult questions because there's a lot of Proverbs. Yes, And this there is are. taken from uh, Proverbs 10 through 12, which was our reading. I'm going to read uh, Proverbs 
chapter 12, verse 18. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. <laughs> you know, you, you really, I mean, really, is that not true in today's media? Yes, um, it is. True. I mean, really, think about that. Think about all the people who are making the news by the vile things they're saying, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one that, a tongue that pierces through and destroys, mm -hmm. but then there's a tongue mm -hmm. of the wise, which brings health, mm -hmm. and it brings health. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, even uh, when we talk with each other, it's so much better to be encouraging to one another than... Uh, well, of course, true. of course it is, and uh, very important. Briefly, I want to show you this real quick, Tim. We're going to do it real quick. This is the YWAM service in downtown Toronto. Um, it's a Korean church service in the middle of the week we went to. We preached there. We gave Bible guides away to the university students. They were down there worshiping God. They love God. They're seeking God. Uh, they all asked me, they said, uh, Pastor Rod, pray with me. I want more of God. I think all of them down there said, pray for me. I want more. I want more of God, more of God. These are university students. So mm -hmm. encouraging. Well-trained yeah. university students, and they love the Lord. YWAM Toronto doing an amazing work. YWAMToronto.org. Mm -hmm. YWAMToronto.org. I'll tell you, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love preaching down in the universities. It's awesome. Uh, the kids are great. So remember to pray for YWAM, and we're praying for you. When you do write to us, by the way, send your prayer request so that we can pray for you. Now, why would you want to do that? We'll only use first name. We'll keep it private. But we'll agree together, and we'll do this. Thank you again for joining us today on the Quick Study Television program as we go through the Bible in one year. I wanted not to leave the program without encouraging you to come to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with all your difficulties. Now listen to me carefully. The Bible says that unless Jesus Christ is Lord of all, He's not Lord at all. And there may be parts of your life and you may be tolerating Jesus, but not really loving Him. And the truth is that unless you truly take Him as Lord of your life, you will not experience the power that He has stored up for you, the wisdom and the riches of that wisdom in heaven. And so today, as we leave the broadcast, I encourage you to come to Christ. If you pray and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, I need you today. And I, I know that you died on the cross and rose again, and I, I ask you, Lord, be Lord of my life. Forgive me, help me, I need you right now. And, and you may even need to call out in desperation. God will respond to you. He's as close as the mention of his name. Come to Christ. Thank you for joining us today on the Quick Study Television program. Remember, we're supported by viewers just like you. Now today at BibleDiscoveryTV.com, our Just Thinking Bible study is how to be really, 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 really smart on BibleDiscoveryTV.com.